SCTV now begins its programming day. Starring John Candy, Joe Flaherty, Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, Catherine O'Hara, Harold Ramis, and Dave Thomas. With special guest stars, Sir John Gielgud and Sir Ralph Richardson. song by her mother and she sings that version just as well it's just you know you have the same quality the exact same quality and the same fantastic voice it's incredible thanks Sammy. absolutely incredible just fabulous just fabulous at the same time i i really would like to be known for myself not just as judy garland's daughter but for who i am lorna minnelli ladies and gentlemen lorna minnelli I'll tell you, I'll tell you something right now. She is going to make a big noise in show business. You really are. Coming from you, Sammy, I just couldn't be happy to hear that from anyone. Believe me, believe me, Sammy's the most loyal and honest person I know. And when he says you are going to be a star, you are going to be a star. That's for sure. She is. She's great. You know, Sammy has done more for young performers than any person I know. My mother and I used to love you. across the hall. I was taping a special. Then I'd come in here and spread a little sunshine. Can I say no. something? Can I say something? I was in the hall before the show, and I heard one of the numbers you were doing for your special. Can I say something, Bobby? It's the best thing I've ever seen on television. Isn't that marvelous? That's marvelous. Thank you. Wow. Word is that thing is going to be out of sight. It's hey, be great. Sam, listen, I'll tell you, Sam, it's going to be a fantastic special. You know, you, <laughs> but speaking of fantastic shows, I think this show right here is a fantastic show. Hey, all right. Hey, hey. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, to be quite honest now, to be honest, it's only great, it's only fantastic because I have fantastic guests on the show. Yeah. Oh, they oh, are. Look at yeah. Mr. Humble. Yeah. Mr. Humble over here. Wait, can I say something right here? You know, I have never, speaking quite honest, I have never seen this man on a stage or in a studio in front of an audience when he's not giving his all, when he's not sweating, when this man gives 110% all the time. 110. I love you, Sammy Marvin. I really do. I'll tell you what's oh. tough. You know what makes me sweat? Trying to follow this guy, ladies and gentlemen, hey. in a club. He is just... Oh, oh Mr. Dynamite. Oh, Mr. Dynamite. That's what he's not. <laughs> May I just say something? Sammy last year, and he will not say this on TV, he's that kind of guy. He was named Mr. Kidney for 1975. Oh. There he is. Come on now. Just a beautiful guy. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> now it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Miss Trish Nutley. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Not on me. Can I just say something? <laughs> Can I get a word in edgewise? <laughs> 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 you know, I, I, was sitting, I was sitting back in the green room right oh. watching the show for a long time now. And uh, I would like to say something. I would like to go on record, and I'm sure the audience will back me up on this. I would like to say that you people are the biggest bunch of plastic vinyl phonies I've ever come across. Take a good look at yourselves. Come on. What are you doing sitting out here? Nothing but compliments. But you don't care about each other. No, you don't mean a word of it. All you care about is yourselves. I know that for a fact. And the longer I stood out there, I wondered, why the hell did I ever want to be on such a stupid, sleazy show? Oh, you're a bunch of phony men. 
camp. It's just phonies every one of you. It makes me sick. Sammy, can I say something right now? And this, as a comic, in all seriousness, I, it's not often you see young performers come on a show like this and, mm -hmm. and forget the business and so forth and so on and just come out and speak their minds. Yes. And I think it's a fantastic quality yes, these it really young is. kids have got you know. today. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. 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 Young people today, I, I dig them. I really do. Oh, oh, just wait I'm proud to right be in on. your generation, Trish. Oh, you are right 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 God bless you, young lady. Well, that's all the time we have right now. Uh, we don't have time for Queen Elizabeth. No. All right. That's, uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Good night. and welcome to Sunrise Semester. The subject is Classical Greek, and I'm your instructor, Alki Stereopoulos. Well, today we're going to uh, study Pericles, the writings of Pericles, and in particular, his uh, journal of the Battle of the Philippi. So, to begin with, we start with a dialogue between Menelaus and Pericles. And Menelaus, he says to Pericles, he says, he says, hey, baby, What's a happening? <laughs> to which uh, Pericles replies, Good to see you, my friend. What'll it be? <laughs> Menelaus then says, I'll have a roast beef and a Kaiser to go. <laughs> to which uh, Pericles replies, One roast beef on a Kaiser. Then Menelaus says, You better make that on toast. <laughs> to which Pericles exclaims triumphantly, Toast that Kaiser! <laughs> For tomorrow, I want you to study your vocabulary and uh, these words in particular and phrases. Cook, ham sandwich, and close the damn door the air conditioning is on. Thank you. Fred Astaire. Come on with me. It always happens, Greg. These darn socks just won't stay up. Here, try this. Spray on? Yeah. How does it work? Simple. Spray it right on your feet. It comes in four great colors. Chocolate chip, vanilla, lime green, and argyle. Say, even real socks don't cling that close. Why don't you try it? <laughs> spray on really works. There. Couldn't be better, thanks to Spray-On. And for those extra formal occasions, new Spray-On gloves. Spray-On, from the oven cleaning people. <laughs> These four people will match wits with the greatest minds the world has ever known as they start their climb towards the top of the $211,000 triangle. I'm Bill Monty, and now let's meet today's contestants. We have Miss Brenda O'Donnell and her celebrity partner, lovely country and western singer, Miss Kinsey Okay, and we have Tommy No Form over here and his celebrity partner, funny man Bobby Bittman. Hey, how are you? Hi, Bobby, how are you? <laughs> okay, we're gonna let the girls start things up. Bryn and Kay, will you please select from our categories on the triangle? You see it up there, go ahead. I think, therefore, I am. Okay, Brenda, we've given you the answers. Now, you have to make up the questions for Kay. You've got 30 seconds to get all five. Ready and go! Um, uh, he described the natural ascension of quality through an abstracted idea Plato, of pure essence. Plato. All right. Uh, he divided truth into ethical, physical, and metaphysical. Aristotle. Right. Um, he put of mutually exclusive ethical ideas with the emphasis on either or when... Soren the... Kierkegaard. Right. Um, his beliefs revolved around a system of developing absolute... Teach Right. Um, he thought the world was simply an idea organized and directed by the will. Oh, uh, 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 hey, good work, bro. Five we'll crack at the big money on the $211,000 triangle. Now let's go over to our opponents. Are you set? Yeah, okay. All yeah. right, with 30 seconds and five questions. Do I get questions. to pick a category? Yes, you do. Indeed you do. Pick a category up there. Okay, let's see. Um, geez, I don't know. 
Uh, how about it's a grand night for singing? That's opera. Oh, I didn't know that. Bobby, you're going to be making up the clues. You have the answers in front of you on your monitor. Are you set? All set. All right, 30 <laughs> seconds for five. Get ready and go. Uh, hmm. This must be an Italian law firm. Italian law firm? Uh, Italian. Uh, next one, next one, next one. Uh, mm. Come on, come on. Uh, Clue. Uh, Caruso's favorite bars in Rome. Caruso's favorite bars in Rome? I'm sorry, you uh, moron! Hey, like that, Bob. Just a comment. Come on, come on! <laughs> hey, hey! Oh, ooh, I can hardly pronounce this one. Uh, uh, rhymes with Rosie and Fruity. <laughs> Rosie and Fruity? Uh, Sorry, boys, no points on that round either. Brenda, that makes you our big winner, and you've got $1,000. Do you want to go now into our bonus round and take a chance with that $1,000 towards a crack of the big money with the $211,000 triangle? You bet, Bill. Well, come on up to the triangle, make a selection here of which of our celebrity guests you're going to be playing with. And you've selected Bobby Bittman. All right, Bobby, here in the triangle. Okay, crazy. Now, would you rather give or take the clues? What if it's possible for me to play with Kay? No, I'm sorry, you did pick Bobby, dear, so, uh... All right, I'll give the clues, Okay, then. you'll give the clues. You'll be taking them from that monitor over there. Bobby, you'll be getting the answers. Are you ready? Go! Uh, he ran 26 miles carrying news of the Spartan victory at Marathon. Jesse Owens. No, ancient Greece. Oh. Rhymes with Euripides. We are serendipities. Oh, God, next one, uh... A French general who defeated George Washington and captured his diary. I honestly don't know. I don't honestly don't know. Maybe he's Next one. Of the, um, uh, the first queen of England. The first uh, queen. Uh, the queen. The first. Well, yeah, listen, uh, okay. stay with me. Just talk about don't. Okay. It was. Just one of those things. Mary. I'm sorry you're all out of time. But nobody goes away empty-handed. You've got a home version game of the $211,000 triangle and a two-album set, the best of Bobby Bittman. That's all the time we have. Goodbye. It's time for Cooking with LaRue. Fast recipes for limited budgets with Chef Johnny LaRue. Hi, I'm Johnny LaRue, as you already know. You know, today's show is going to be a little different. I've been reading the newspaper recently, and I found out that there's some poor people out there in the world People on welfare and disability, I don't know what it is. It's, I guess you just can't afford to cook what I'm cooking on my show, and I want to help you out as much as I can because I'm a friend of yours, you know that. All right. Well, okay, let's get right to today's recipe. It's a little thing I call tabby surprise casserole. Now, I use a little thing called paw and whiskers. Okay, you're gonna say this is a Johnny LaRue product. He's plugging his own products. I'm not, it's just real good stuff. Okay, now the ingredients you need, you need some ketchup. Some water, uh, some breadcrumbs. You can steal them from the pigeons in the park where you're going to get the grass, probably, because that's probably where you're living these days. All right, you need some salt and pepper. You can shoplift all this stuff if you want. Just don't tell them where you got that idea from. OK, let's get down to it now. You get a couple cans of cat food, and you throw it in a preheated skillet in here, all right? Just sort of, sort of. All right, so, geez. Just mix it in there. And Throw a cover on it quick. Let it lock up all those flavorful juices in there. You can keep these uh, little dishes, too. You can probably use them for bowls later on. All right, now the rest of this stuff here, you get some ketchup. You just uh, throw it on there like that. Then you get the breadcrumbs, and you throw them in there. You get the water, pour that in there. A little salt, a little pepper. Then you get some vinegar. OK, you got all that? Okay, you can even throw some booze in there if you can steal it from somebody. All right, now just get this home. Uh, just throw this stuff on there like that. Oh, isn't that looking good so far? Oh, God. Don't you people go get a job for crying out loud, you know? Maybe this stuff will build up your strength. You can go pick up your welfare checks in time. All right, now, uh, um, just a minute here. Now, just form all this stuff up in there like that. Um, tell you what, I got one already made in the oven. You just throw this in the oven at 500 degrees. Now, earlier I made one. And this is what it looks like, the finished product, huh? Pretty good, huh? Not too bad. All right, you get a little grass and you can throw that on there. Now I'm gonna get somebody from the audience. Come on out here, you. Come on, old lady. No. Come, on. Come on, you old lady. Come on. No, thank you. All right, doesn't that look good to you? Huh? Doesn't that look good? It's smooth. Come on, eat it, you poor slob. Come on, get in there and eat it. Come on, get in there. Come on, I made it just for you. You poor little... Hey, come on, what are you talking about? You poor slobs, why don't you go out and get a job, for crying out loud? I've been working since I was nine years old. Yeah, sure, look where I am today. I'm right on top. 
one of the best couple shows in the world. Yeah, that galloping gourmet, sure. <laughs>
The answer is your own name, J-O-H-N, Jock. And I didn't get that. I'm embarrassed. Well, you've done it all. It's finished now. Right. stands in the middle of one's face? No. Why does one's nose stand in the middle of one's face? Why, to keep one's eye on either side's nose that what man cannot smell out, he may spy into. Remember that great joke from Act One, Scene Five of King Lear? <laughs> Hi, I'm Sheldon Katenka. And I'm Bernard Sollins. You know, no one appreciated a good laugh as much as the immortal bard himself. And now we've collected all those laughs and put them together in one big record album, Shakespeare's greatest jokes. Remember this knee-slapping delight? He that will have a cake out of the wheat must needs to tarry the grinding. Have I tarried? Aye, thou hast tarried the grinding, but what of the bolting? Well, have I tarried? Aye, to the bolting, but what of the leavening? Still have I tarried. Aye, the leavening, but here's yet in the word hereafter. The kneading, the making of the cake, and the heating of the oven, and the baking. Nay. Thou must stay the cooling, too, or you will chance to burn your lips. That's funny stuff. You'll get these and hundreds more. So, send today, and if you do, we'll send to you this volume of footnotes to help you get the jokes you get. Write Shakespeare's Greatest Jokes, Box 1976, Drury Lane, London, SW1. You'll laugh the nose right off the middle of your face. Words to live by with Dr. Michael Meyer. Hello. Tonight's reading is St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. It reads. Dear Ephesians, how are you? I am fine. Come on down to Rome sometime. Your old buddy Paul. Perhaps I can sum that up in a different way by quoting you a little of the second book of Caucasians. It's in the apocalypse, it's not here. The Caucasians three, number one. In the beginning, there was nothing. And the Lord said, that there be light. And there was still nothing. But you just could see it. Thank you. Thank you. You get the camera off me. There's a light still on there. Turn anything off. Anyway. Go. Go on. Get out. It's over. I finished. Let's go. Touch. 